Hi guys, this is Sadek from Dwebrin.com and in this video, we'll show you how to flash the latest Evolution X ROM based on Android 14 onto your Poco F5. So please take a backup of all the data on your phone and then let's get started. First off, you'll have to get hold of Android SDK platform tools. So get it from my guide and extract them onto your PC. You could extract them anywhere you want. In my case, I've done the extraction in C drive and these are the files of platform tools. Moving on, you will now have to enable USB debugging and OEM unlocking. USB debugging is required to execute ADB command, whereas OEM unlocking is required to unlock the bootloader on your phone. So let's now carry out both this task. For that, go to settings menu, then go to about phone and tap on MIUI version seven times. You will get a prompt that you are now a developer. So go back, then select additional settings and you should now see developer option. So go there and enable the toggle next to OEM unlocking as well as USB debugging. Now check mark I'm aware of all the risk and then you will have to wait for 10 seconds. Once that time frame has elapsed, just tap on OK. And with this debugging is now enabled. You might get an RC key prompt as well. In that case, tap on OK once again. And with this, we have enabled USB debugging. So let's now verify the same. For that, you will have to go to platform to folder address bar. So go there, type in CMD and hit enter. This will launch command prompt inside platform tool folders. So now you will have to type in ADB devices and hit enter and make sure that you are getting a serial ID. If you are not getting any ID, then unplug and replug your phone from the PC, disable and re-enable USB debugging, tap on revoke USB debugging, use the official cable that came with your phone and use the USB 2.0 port on your PC. So carry out this USB tweaks and make sure that you are getting an ID. Once you are getting this ID, let's now move ahead with the next step. So now you will have to unlock the bootloader on your phone. Do note that doing so will wipe off all the data and it could make the warranty null and void as well. So if that's well and good, you could refer to my guide or the video and get this job done using the official me unlock tool. So once you have unlocked the bootloader, let's now proceed ahead. So now you may get hold of the Evolution X ROM based on latest Android 14 for your Poco F5 from this link. So get hold of the ROM and then transfer the ROM onto your phone. So let me show you this is the ROM zip file. Make sure to Transfer the ROM file onto your phone. Once that is done, you will now have to boot your phone to fast boot mode. For that, let's type in the command. So type in ADB, reboot, bootloader and hit enter. And your phone will now reboot into fast boot mode. It will take only a few seconds. So let's just wait for that to happen and then we could move ahead with the next step. So it's now in the fast boot mode. Now type in fast boot devices and make sure that you are getting a serial ID. If you're not getting any ID, then you will have to install fast boot drivers on your PC. I have made a separate guide and a video on the same. You could refer to my guide and get the job done. Once you have installed the drivers, right click on the window icon and select device manager. Then expand the Android phone section and make sure your phone is being shown as Android bootloader interface. So this as well as the serial ID next to fastboot signify that the PC is able to read the phone in fastboot mode and you are now good to go ahead. So now you will have to install the latest Evo Viper recovery onto your phone. For that, make sure to get hold of the Android 14 build. I have made a separate guide on the same. So let's now install the recovery as well. So regarding this, we have already checkmarked the first requirement, second requirement, the third requirement as well. And from here, you will now get hold of the Android 14 recovery file. Once you have got the recovery, it will be in IMG format. You will now have to transfer the recovery file to the platform to folder on your PC. So this is the recovery file. Copy it from here and make the transfer inside the platform to folder. Once you have done the transfer, Let's now rename it to something shorter for the ease of convenience. So let's just rename it to TWRP and the complete name becomes TWRP.IMG. So we will now have to flash this file onto our phone. For that, you may simply use this command forward flash recovery underscore AB TWRP.IMG. So copy the command from my guide and paste it in the CMD window and hit enter. The flashing will now start and it will automatically flash the recovery file to both the A and B partition. If that does not happen, then you may also use these two commands to manually flash the recovery to the recovery A partition and the recovery B, B partition. But in most cases, this command should work well and good. So let's now verify the same. As you could see, the flashing is now done successfully. So let's now reboot our phone to the recovery mode. For that, type in fastboot, reboot, recovery, and your phone should now reboot into WRP, which will signify that the flashing has been done successfully. And you could now move ahead with the next step. So let's wait for a few more seconds. And as you could see, we are inside the recovery. So that recovery has been flashed successfully. 
and now we could start flashing the rom file so uh, in some cases the recovery might be in chinese language so in that you will have to choose the sixth option then hit the globe icon at the top right and then select english and then tap on this button at the bottom right and with this you will be in the english language anyways moving on once we have got the recovery file you will now have to first and foremost if you are on the miui firmware then you will have to flash the hyper os firmware on the other hand if you were already on hyper os then you don't need to flash any firmware and you may skip the step 7 and move ahead with the st step 8 so again i'm repeating if you were on the miui version then you will have to flash hyper os firmware on the other hand if you are already on the hyper os then simply skip the step 7 and move ahead with the step 8 as of now i am on the miui version so i'll have to flash the hyper os firmware as well so you may get hold of the firmware file from this link just make sure to get hold of the file which correspond to your region in my case it's the india build so download the firmware as well and transfer the firmware file onto your phone if your phone is not visible on your pc or if you're not able to access the storage from the pc then you may also transfer the firmware file inside the platform code folder and from here then open cmd window and type in adb push firmware dot zip space slash sd card and this will also transfer the file onto your phone so you may also use this command if your phone is not visible on your pc in my case i could access the phone from my pc and this is the firmware file so make sure to do the transfer if you were currently on miui and we have to then flash it to go to the hyper os if you're already on the hyper os then you may simply skip this step and move ahead with the next step so as of now i have to flash the firmware so for that go to install select the firmware zip file and do a right click to flash it the flashing will now start and it will take only a few seconds for that to happen and with this the flashing is now done so now go back and you will now have to flash the rom file so let's start it for that go to the source section of wrp from install select the rom zip file and do a right click to flash it the flashing of the rom will now start and it could take up to around 8 to 10 minutes so let's just wait for the flashing to complete so guys as soon as the flashing is complete you will get this error messages these errors are completely normal and nothing to worry about just make sure that you are getting the successful message after the install zip if that's well and good then let's move ahead i am again repeating these error messages are just well and good and nothing to worry about just make sure you are getting the success message over here if that's well and good you could now move ahead and our next course of action is to do a format data but before that you will have to reboot your phone to the recovery mode so go back to the recovery home screen select reboot and choose recovery and your phone will now reboot to the wrp recovery and once that happen we will then do a format data do keep in mind that doing so will wipe off all the data from your phone and it so make sure you have taken a backup beforehand anyways we are now once again inside the recovery so we could now move ahead and now do a format data so go to wipe select format data type in yes and hit the blue check mark the format data will now start and once then go back again go back again go back select reboot and now you may select system and your phone should now reboot into the newly flashed os let's first verify if we see the boot animation or not if you could see the boot animation this then that signifies that the flashing has been done successfully and we could then proceed ahead so as you could see it's the evolution x boot animation so just to repeat once you have flashed the rom you will see quite a few issues and error messages that is completely normal you just have to do a reboot to recovery and then do a format data and then boot to os and with this the flashing stands complete moreover the first boot up will take up some additional time that is completely normal and nothing to worry about and as you could see we are now inside the os so let's get started as of now i'll skip the initial setup process and take you to the os and show you some of the features of it as well so let's accept the terms and condition and skip the rest of the stuffs and skip this as well and with this we are now inside the evolution x rom based on android 14 onto your poco f5 and as you might be aware this is the section which has the maximum amount of customizations and all such tweaks so first off we have the theme section from here you may choose the theming style and theming colors so let me show you a couple of themes so as you could see it's being changed this is the default theme 
then you may choose the color source for instance it will choose the dominant color from the wallpaper home screen or the lock screen wallpaper or both as of now it's choosing the dominant color from both the wallpapers then you apart from the wallpapers we have the theming schedule you could schedule the dark theme and light theme then there are quite a few font styles that you could choose from here as you could see the changes are being implemented it will be implemented across the os and throughout the ui and ux the nothing dot font is also there as you could see then there are quite a lot of font style as you could choose from here then apart from that you have uh, icon packs as well which you could choose then there are a few wi-fi icon style this is the nothing dot os style then you have icon shapes so for instance let's choose the scroll and see so as you could see it's not looking that great anyways let's get back to the default font style or rather icon style then go back and this is the brightness slider for instance let's choose bang and let me see the result so as you could see it has been changed the brightness slider has been changed it's the bang style now go back and we have a navigation bar style if you're using three button navigation then you could choose from these styles apart from that you may choose the signal icon style as well there are again quite a lot of carrier network signal icons then you have the 4g and 5g lte icon style apart from that there are a few notification tweaks that you could choose then status bar we have already shown so in a status bar you may select the status bar logo enable it and once enabled you may then choose a logo for instance this is the blackberry as you could see at the top left of your screen then this is the spider-man logo and ubuntu logo anyways let me turn it off then apart from that you may choose the battery style and the battery percent so this is the big dotted circle as you could see at the top right then you may choose the battery percentage to be shown or hidden notification count and the color icon as you could see the icons are currently white in color if you enable it it will then be colored similar to how it's shown in the app drawer then there are a few other tweaks as well apart from that the qs setting toggles could also be customized you may hide the label and the naming scheme from the tiles name then you may change the label text size or number of columns of qs tiles could also be changed you may add an image you may either choose from some stock images so for instance let's choose this image and as you could see it has been implemented in the qs tiles then let me show you one more image and it has also been implemented and applied apart from so let me show you all the images which are there in the qs styles so there are quite a lot of qs images that you could choose from it's a never ending list this looks great as well futuristic outlook and anyways these are some of the you may also choose your own image and set it as a qs header and change the transparency of these images apart from that you could choose from the battery style and battery percent quick pull down for instance if you choose right then it will expand the qs tiles x from the right hand side it will directly expand it right up to the bottom then apart from that you may choose the brightness style slider style percentage and position as well then the animation if you interact with the qs tiles for instance as you could see i've chosen flip and it's undergoing a flip animation and apart from that then we have the few gesture tweaks as well take a partial screenshot tap to sleep if you double tap on the status bar for sleep double tap to wake is also working then apart from that you have a few lock screen tweaks for instance the edge light animation the edge light will be lighted in case of notifications then apart from that there are a few other lock screen tweaks such as the aod media art cover but all this will also result in additional battery drainage so although you will get some good ui ux tweaks and animation but they might lead to additional battery drainage so decide accordingly then you have the button tweaks as well a couple of button animations then some miscellaneous and this is the most important part of this rom at least for me so from here you must spoof your phone and pass the plain integrity test so for instance first off make sure to enable the toggle then go to plain integrity and let's verify the phone that it's using so as of now it's using an hisense phone with this model number so it might be the case that in the as of now you might be passing the plain integrity test but in the near future you might fail this test because google could end up patching this 
fingerprint. So while the ROM developers usually rolls out a new fingerprint, but that could end up taking some time. In the meantime, you could refer to my guide and pass the test using any of these four methods as well. I have also made a video on each of these four methods. You could re refer to my guide and pass this test. This passing of test is very important because you, if you don't do so, then you will not be able to use any banking and payment app of your choice. So make sure that you, you are passing this test. So as of now, it's using the Hisense fingerprint in the near future, it might use some other fingerprint until and unless Google patches this. Apart from that, it has also enabled the Pixel 8 Pro spoof. So you might get a few Pixel 8 AI features. Then it's the unlimited Google photo storage. You will get unlimited storage in original quality. Then you may enable the Netflix spoof. So as you might be aware, if you're using a custom ROM, then the DRM wide one certification gets downgraded to L3 and you will not be able to watch any DRM content in full HD. However, thanks to this feature, you could then easily watch all the DRM content from Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime and all such service in full HD. So this is one of the most important aspects of these ROM which you might not find in any other ROM. At least when it comes to plain ticket fix, you might not be able to find this feature on, on any other ROM. So make sure to enable this toggle and then use this plain ticket fix. Or you could also use my guide to get this job done. Anyway guys, on that note, I round off this video. If you have any queries with regard to any of the steps mentioned here, do let me know in the comment section and thanks a lot for watching.